So I've been trying to engage in discussion and debate and so on with, well, anybody really, um, but particularly I thought I was making headway uh, with a couple of people um, involved in the more academic uh, side, I suppose, the, which is a side that besides um, media issues has also come in for quite a bit of criticism. I guess you would say, or well, scrutiny uh, is probably a better word. Um, amongst those, I've particularly been talking to uh, Carrie Lynn Reinhardt, who is Media Oracle on Twitter, and someone who you'll know as Fens in Fridges. Now, I thought we were getting on uh, fairly well. Um, and making some sort of sort of progress and articulating the the issues, but it seems not. Um, if anyone was paying attention uh, last night, I had a bit of a falling out uh, with films in fridges um, because things had started to shift towards criticism of groups like Digra or Digra, whatever you want to call them, and and so on, and the quality of their scholarship, their reluctance and protest um, towards proper peer review. Um, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of issues uh, with, in, in general, really, with activist, uh, in scare quotes, uh, scholarship, <laughs> uh, activist science and money corrupting science and so on. Yeah, this is a, this is a general issue uh, that has come about. So, oh, I accepted a challenge to um, prove several things um, as, a, as a way of kind of demonstrating what, what the issue was. Now, I'm not an academic. The only formal training in um, assessing evidence and presenting cases like that that I've had is history, which is uh, kind of a weird case because historical things are very, very difficult to prove, especially the, f the further back you go, you have to rely on creating an interwoven s a supporting network of sources and so on, and most of them are witness statements which are notoriously unreliable, so um, it's very hard to assert something absolutely historically, um, but that that's where my formal training is. Otherwise, I'm a skeptic and a rationalist, and what I normally do is to examine the claims of others and pick them apart for flaws, rather than necessarily make it myself. So, anyway, for sake of argument, um, I took up the challenge, thinking that it would be treated honestly um, and assessed rationally and that it might actually lead us somewhere useful. What happened instead was that instead of assessing any of the evidence that I put forward it was all summarily dismissed. Much of it on the basis of rather elementary logical fallacies which even you know a, a first, not, e not even a first year student like a three month student <laughs> should know better than to do. So when I'm talking to people who claim to be academics and want me to take their research seriously, and when they're presented with evidence, rather than dealing with the evidence, they summarily dismiss it, and on such a for such bad reasons, um, it it's hard to continue to extend that trust, and I feel betrayed. I I thought we had established a, a rational and reasonable relationship and that what I presented would be taken seriously uh, and treated seriously and if it was going to be debunked it would be debunked effectively and seriously. Th this isn't what happened and that's why I am so upset, you know, I, I put trust in these people, um, I believed them when they presented their academic credentials, I assumed they would make an argument on a rational and reasonable basis, and they did not. In fact, they have now provided me with probably more evidence than we had before that there are serious, serious problems in so-called games academia, which I'm going to start taking to calling pseudo-academia if things carry on like this. So what are the issues? Well, okay, so 
you're presented with a source and that source maybe let's say is a news article and the news article contains references to uh, other points of evidence so what you have is an article that acts as a carrier for other evidence presented simply because it is useful and saves a lot of time to provide such a reference uh, one in the particular example I gave not only was the one of the reporters presenting this evidence that there had been uh, corruption issues in gaming but they were a direct source themselves because they were saying that they had experienced it so you have a primary source referencing other sources so it's both the primary source for his claims and a secondary source with references and links directly to other evidence so what possible reason could you have to dismiss this well you shouldn't dismiss a secondary source because a secondary source is still a source and it still constitutes evidence albeit weaker evidence than a primary source uh, dismissing it because it's an article it doesn't make sense at all um, I have also referenced things like Sargon's videos and at that point they just simply dismissed them out of hand despite I, I think Sargon does a very good job of gathering his evidence so okay why is why is that a problem if we were having an informal debate about something it wouldn't be a problem if we're having an informal debate you know just a discussion an argument back and forth then you know dismissing something out of hand can be justified if it has an established history of being unreliable and so on so like if I'm in an argument or a debate with a creationist and they refer me to say answers in Genesis I can pretty much dismiss that out of hand because it's an obviously biased source and there's heaps and heaps of evidence and I have bitter past experience on just how rubbish they are so yeah in that instance that's acceptable however what we were in engaged in was a more formal thing so in that instance again let's take it away from Gamergate and Gamergate related issues so we can talk about it in a more neutral tone so say I was in a formal you know back and forth blog debate or something um, with a creationist I would have to put more effort in than simply to say that's from answers to Genesis therefore it's invalid because that would be a fallacious argument that would be poisoning the well that would be a genetic fallacy it comes from here therefore it's wrong it's not necessarily true to give a very very crude example of this um, say Joseph Stalin told me that 2 plus 2 is 4 he is right dismissing him because he's a murderous tyrant is, is irrational um, it's not a basis for saying otherwise if I want to contradict or disprove the evidence that he has put forward 2 plus 2 is 4 this statement I would have to show it it's not sufficient to simply dismiss it out of hand so if there are problems with say what Sargon said you need to go back to that and you need to show it you can't just say it's Sargon that doesn't that doesn't count it's not rational it is these logical fallacies that I've said so you know this is a problem when so-called academics dismiss evidence out of hand without actually considering the evidence or showing why the evidence is invalid how can they call themselves academics you know this, this is incredibly basic stuff uh, it can be taken advantage of you know you can pelt someone with claims which they then have to painstakingly uh, work over and, and debunk this in you know creationism versus evolution arguments this is called a gish gallop where you basically overwhelm your opponent with claims with poor evidence for them and then, then they have to laboriously go through it and debunk everything which leaves them no time or energy in order to make their own case however this isn't the isn't the case in this example to rub salt into the wound um, Fems in Fridges then went on to write their own version of proof which contained exactly the same kinds of sources indeed exactly the same sources in several cases that I had referenced and yet said you know this is an effective argument well this is a, a glaring example which I will use in future of a double standard if I write it somehow it's invalid if you write it somehow it's valid that simply doesn't doesn't pass muster evidence is evidence and evidence should be considered in and of itself in a vacuum
It doesn't matter who it comes from. What matters is the validity of the evidence. And again, this is basic stuff that anyone claiming to be an academic should know and should be able to avoid. And yet, that doesn't happen. So yeah, I am upset. I have invested a lot of time and effort into trying to reach out and discuss with these people. I went into this hoping that they would be honest and open and direct and um, disciplined in, in discussing what I have presented. And they have not. And this now constitutes evidence that there are deep, deep problems in this pseudo-academic discipline. Um, that's why I am upset. Um, I feel betrayed. I feel like I've wasted my time trying to reach out, build bridges, and get across to people what the problem is. And I feel like I am not being dealt with honestly. I feel like I have been fucked around with. Um, and I'm questioning whether it's whether it's worthwhile carrying on. Um, and that's a horrible way to feel. And I don't like feelings. Feelings suck. I would much rather be distanced and rational, but what can you do? Anyway, peace out.